Good evening. I'd like to call to order the adjourned meeting of the Library Board of Trustees, the Southern California Logistics Airport Authority, successor agency to the Victorville Redevelopment Agency, Victorville Water District, City Council of the City of Victorville, and the closed session of the City Council of the City of Victorville. Um, at this time, we have a presentation by our city manager, so I'll turn it over to him. Uh, I'm looking out there for members of the public, and it's not looking like we got any any folks that showed up today. Uh, the intent was to thank the volunteers uh, who helped keep the West Wind Sports Center open. Looks like they're not here today, so we'll try to coordinate a, a better date and time to get them uh, some some thank yous. Okay. We can skip that one. Uh, then we'll move on to public comment, uh, agenda item number one. I do not have any cards under the public comment section. Anyone wishing to address the council under public comment? No one will go ahead and move on to our public hearings. And uh, Doug, are we going to take the entire budget at one? That would be my preference, okay. yes. Then I'll defer to you on all the public hearings related to the various entities that we represent uh, as to our fiscal year 2012 2013 budget. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, uh, staff is proud to present a balanced budget with a very small surplus. Uh, we discussed it in Pretty good detail uh, uh, last Tuesday. Uh, I'm not going to repeat the presentation, although I can. If there's any piece of it that you'd like to, to hear again or like to see again, I, I do have access to my computer and can pull it up real quick. Um, but uh, at this point, uh, we've got essentially uh, most of our management staff who uh, worked on the budget uh, available to answer any questions you may have about any of the departments uh, that, that are before you tonight. All right, uh, with that, um, before we uh, get into questions or comments from the council, I do want to open the public hearing on the various agencies that this council represents. Uh, is, and I know I have one card, Norm, so if you'd come forward. Mr. Mayor, council members, my name is Norman Miller, and I hope to not be complaining too much here, but I just wanted to bring a couple of subjects up. And it's mainly, I guess, on roads and that. And I'm just wondering, since, what, 1998 or 99, whatever it was, when the Golden Triangle joined the city, we haven't seen much improvement in the area. Some minor things, but there's a lot of things that need to be improved. We have not gotten any um, storm drain help. We've been paying storm drain fees for the last 12 years or whatever more, and it would be nice if we could get something in there, especially for Bear Valley Road. That's the main area that needs the help. Uh, and speaking of Bear Valley Road, I did last time. I'm going to do it again. Uh, we just drove down Bear Valley coming here, and from 395 to almost uh, Amethyst, the road is pretty good. There's a little bad part on the south side just before Amethyst. It's mostly uh, like ruts. Uh, where the uh, cracks have been filled in that. But from Amethyst to uh, Elevedo, I'm sorry, not a, uh, to uh, Amagosa, the road is a disgrace. And it seems like all the diff feeds we've been putting out, and I know how you use them, but it seems like we could get some work from those diff feeds to get that Bear Valley Road fixed up. I think it's the worst road in the, at least Victorville, if not the Victor Valley, for the size of the road is. It's a four lane divided road most of the time. And uh, I really wish you guys could look into that a little bit as you're forming your budgets over the years and get something done in there. You know, the, the gold triangle, it seems to be only golden for you guys. It doesn't seem to be very gold for us. Uh, we're in there, we're paying our, uh, I know you don't get our property taxes, but you know, we're paying our fees for water and sewer, some of them and different things like that, but I haven't seen any of that money come back to any great degree, like I do see it being used in the other parts of Victorville. So that would be my recommendation or my wish, and I know that has nothing to do with the budget here today because that's what's, what is, is, but i just like to look into that, and I will keep on you about that, but uh, we got eucalyptus put in, and that was in the budget, and it was taken out, and it never did get put back in there because somebody paid for it for you guys. But we need these kind of things done. And uh, maybe there's only one or two people that complain about it, but it still needs to be done. 
So thank you. Thank you. Anyone wish, uh, else wishing to address the council on the various budgets? Yeah, kind of dovetail into what he just said. Well, I want to close the public hearing before I have the council right. speak. Anyone else? All right, I'll close the public hearing and return it to the council. Mike? Yeah, and our, our capital improvement, uh, we have for the Golden Triangle one item in here. I notice it says pavement rehabilitation, uh, 286000 Is that kind of generally allocated that whole neighborhood, or what's? how do we do that? If I could get uh, Mr. McGlade to come down and explain how, how those funds are going to be spent. Uh, if I recall correctly, uh, Mr. Miller and Mr. McGlade had a conversation uh, since the budget meeting, and there may have been some minor modifications, at least, to, to those plans. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, um, the project that we had envisaged for the Golden Triangle, uh, we're now looking at a, uh, a reduced version of that but we still intend to spend money in there to do some street improvements. Probably only covers about three streets. Uh, there would be crack ceiling and uh, slurry seal. Um, there, but as you well know, um, there are limited funds for pavement rehabilitation. There are other um, more heavily traveled streets that also need a lot of attention and we're doing the best we can with the available funds. In order to uh, maintain our streets, uh, especially with regard to public safety, uh, the staff has implemented a, a fairly limited uh, street maintenance and street reconstruction program for the next few years uh, until we get through the La Mesa Nisqually Interchange Project and our guaranteed Measure I funds returning uh, to the city. Uh, we're going to be pretty cautious to make sure that, that you know, in future years we've got enough money to, to provide the public safety uh, uh, improvements and, and necessary maintenance first. Any other questions, comments from council members? This is time to address questions about Any the budget other? itself. Yeah, yeah, the whole budget. Yeah, on agency, so. Go ahead. Thank you, because I have a point yours, you're gonna be more in depth. Um, Doug, can you um, tell us what changes you have made um, to this budget from what we requested in our last meeting when you asked for our input and direction? What, what changes since the last time we saw this? Um, there's really no changes since last time uh, you saw that. Um, the, the, the discussion mostly focused on uh, the little bit of a surplus that we had left, the $75,000 was what it was estimated at. Um, and that actually was not in the budget. It was available, it's, it was listed in the budget uh, back on Tuesday and is still listed in the budget as a surplus. Um, so that would go back into reserves as directed by the council. Um, there have been a, a couple of fairly minor modifications uh, to the police contract uh, as it will appear in the budget, um, but those are, it's not affecting any service levels or anything. There was uh, two changes that had to be made that essentially offset each other, um, but that's really the only changes that have been made. Okay, so I, I guess I, I just didn't understand the point of our last presentation and asking for our input if nothing was going to be addressed. It, well, it was addressed. Uh, the, the input was in regard to how you wanted to use the surplus. Um, we didn't assume uh, anything. If you recall, there was a bit of a public outcry regarding the iPads. Uh, those were not actually in the budget. Uh, those were something that was just uh, thrown out there for a discussion point. Um, because the council ultimately uh, directed staff to take that $75,000 and put it towards reserves. Uh, that's actually was the assumption in the draft budget last Tuesday, so that didn't need to change in any way. So we did take that direction and, and implement it. Okay, but what I'm saying is, is if this is a budget workshop, I'm thinking that today is the day that we take this budget apart and, and decide what we're gonna do with it and have the presentation, the full presentation not just the presentation regarding the iPads. That's what was my understanding for today when they say workshop. I thought we were gonna actually get to work. So am um, I wrong? I'm not sure exactly what you're meaning if you're requesting, <coughs> uh, you know. A, a I'm, sa I'm saying when does the council go into this budget and, and be able to have their input 
in, into this budget and what, what our priorities are, because that's what I thought we, we did when I said that public safety, roads, and youth activity were my priorities for the budget. I was concerned about um, the, the raises, um, not so much about the reorganization, because I understand that. Um, um, and, and then I'm seeing the contracts in here, and I, I don't have, is this the time to talk about the contracts? Or Those are separate. Okay. Separate agenda. Uh, okay. Yeah, this would be the time if you have any questions or comments uh, uh, regarding the budget. Actually, the, the best time would have been really last Tuesday. That was the I, intent I, was that was going to be for the discussion. If you had any co comments, questions, wanted any changes that the council could direct staff to make changes. Essentially, the budget was prepared with those very thoughts in mind um, based on the, uh, the work that we did actually last year. Uh, I made an assumption that I think is correct that uh, your priorities haven't changed in, in the last 12 months significantly, and that is public safety, roads, uh, and uh, ultimately the recreation and parks programs. Uh, we are actually enhancing the recreation and parks programs by being able to keep the West Wind Sports Center open and staffed instead of uh, having to rely on the volunteers. We certainly still will engage with the volunteers, and they can focus on uh, the recreational programs rather than the, the more sort of building operating. So budget. when when we have this special meeting today and it says budget workshop that was sent out for the invitation, what work are we doing here? Uh, the What you have before you tonight is a public hearing to actually approve the annual budget. Um, last year we did more of a workshop setting because we had two new council members uh, and we wanted to get your priorities. Uh, if your priorities have changed since last year, um, then uh, certainly let us know, and we can make modifications to the budget uh, in the future. Uh, but I, I haven't heard anything either last Tuesday uh, or received any emails, phone calls, anything regarding any change in, in the priorities of, of the council at all. Well, with that said, then I can't I can't move forward with this budget because I I don't agree with a lot of the things that are in there regarding the raises and cutting the the law enforcement and that sort of thing. So. Well, I'm assuming everybody did what I did, which was I, I read through the, the uh, financial summaries of the city as a whole, and I focused particularly on the departments that I have concerns about. Um, I'm pleased the general fund is, uh, is balanced. Uh, didn't see anything there that caused me any, any particular concern. On page 51, Keith, if you would please address a couple of questions I've got on the... Uh, Airport operations. Um, your your budget for next year shows landing fees are up, but lease revenue is down. Um, are they in any way related? Does one change with the other? Why do you think they've? Why are you expecting that change? Um, a couple of things. Some operational things that we've been doing differently. One of the big ticket items that comprises the landing fees is a really big uh, singular entity, and that's the Air Force. Uh, the Air Force has a contract with us. It's called uh, a joint use landing agreement, and effectively it's what allows the C-17s that you see typically in the afternoons and evening times flying around. Um, they pay about $1.7, $1.8 million a year for that freedom, for that right to, to go out and hit our pavement, beat up the pavement, um, um, and, and in addition to the maintenance and capital expense, it's also the cost associated with maintaining the tower and, and the fire service. So they pay us uh, that amount um, uh, annually. Um, the second component, which would be largely the difference, would be uh, the amounts that we charge directly to the airline or the tenant responsible for landing the airplane out at the airport. And one of the things that we've done probably over the course of the last six months and though it wasn't uh, very uh, favorably received, um, we had uh, looked into past management practice with respect to those particular uh, landing fees for the company, say a leading edge or a Pacific Aerospace. When they have work coming in, um, we had found that despite what the airport's rules and regulations said, thou shalt pay a landing fee, we weren't charging landing fees. So one of the things that we've done is, in, well, we've, we've started charging. We, we count the airplanes, we watch the airplane touchdown, we, we, we take notation of the tail numbers, 
and then we bill accordingly. So that's, it could be considered as a new form of revenue in the landing fee category. It doesn't so much have a direct relationship to the lease revenue component. Lease revenue component is largely either your ground lease of dirt or your leasing of buildings. And what we've seen, unfortunately, in this fiscal year upcoming, um, we've, we've seen a reduction in, in what we've had. In fact, I would characterize the last two fiscal years as likely the best fiscal years you've had and uh, hopefully we can get back to that. Those would be nice measures to, to as, as goals to get back towards. Uh, but we've had some lease expire, uh, expiring. We've had a couple of terminations. Um, we've got one case particularly where a big tenant of ours is reducing their footprint uh, by half, which effectively reduces the revenue uh, by half. Um, we've also, and we always very conservatively estimate the lease revenues, if it just so happens that we have a lease expiring, say, midterm in the year, we don't, we don't budget or count on that remaining six months. The, 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 the typical experience we've had is we do get the renewal, but because we don't have that lease going beyond the term, um, we don't count on it. So effectively, when we do renew, that becomes a new budget revenue item, and it actually props up the revenue um, category. But that, that's largely the reason why we've seen that budget uh, lease revenue number go down. With, with revenues slightly lower, last year your budget was 8.4 million, this year 7.6. Wages are higher by about a million dollars and contract services are lower by what, 400,000. Uh, you're still, I mean, it's, you've still got a surplus, but what, what do you think would account for the increase in wages? Uh, we have transferred over uh, quite a few employees. Um, there, there certainly has been uh, a demand in, in service uh, uh, human, that human capital can provide. Um, uh, resulting from the RDA dissolution, we were able to absorb some of that staff to take on some of those uh, management functions that were being neglected or uh, not uh, addressed in a full-time manner. Does, does that account for some of the decrease in contract services? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But overall, the airport is... Um, 7.6 million in revenues, 7 million in expenses, about a $600,000 surplus budgeted, and you've got planned 540,000 in capital improvements. About right? That is that is correct, and those capital improvement items uh, uh, s typically carry over. Um, we're certainly planning on all of these capital improvement items to occur in the upcoming fiscal year, but it's very common due to delay, especially in the FAA cycle. Uh, to have those carry over into a future future year. Uh, Sean, if you don't mind, a couple questions on the water district. Um, we've got sales and consumption are down, which wouldn't surprise me because we, we just got less demand with population changes. But labor is higher and contract services is higher. Uh, any idea of why? Um, can you indicate which page? I'm on page 48. On if you want to look at that, yeah. revenues are slightly down from last year's budget. I mean, it's all balanced. I'm not concerned that. We, I'm just curious as to why, when revenues are down, wages would be higher. Not a lot. Two hundred thousand dollars, but. The, on the contract services, there, uh, there were two um, engineering staff members that were paid from um, the, the water district funds that uh, resigned, and we've had to uh, hire a contract employee to uh, replace the whole, um, hoping to fill that position, you know, with a, a recruitment process, but in the meantime, we're programming in some contract service but otherwise wages are up is that just because of that three percent increase we did um i'm sorry i don't understand uh, wages in the oh, this yeah. year's budget are higher than last year's budget i don't know actual because we're only looking at actuals through april so we don't actually know it would probably be mostly to the the uh, cost of living increase as well as well as merit increases but you're not expecting any change in the workforce Yes, whether there are some vacancies that we would be f filling this year that oh. we did not fill last year. Um, but otherwise, it's 
Water Department, revenues of 32, expenses of 21 million. Correct. Capital improvements of 5.2 million, and we're going to add about 5 million to the net assets. The final right, that's, it's, it's also one of the reasons why we're uh, also recommending in a different item that we not implement the yeah. water rate increase. That's, that, that would be that, a that, good that's reason. That's exactly why. Yeah. Okay. Um, and wastewater, just just an observation. Um, we got 12.6 million in in uh, revenues and wastewater operations, 10.6 million in expenses. That's the number I've been kind of groping for all year. It looks like about a $2 million surplus. And it looks like you're planning on doing about a $1.7 million in capital improvements with that $2 million. Correct. For a leftover surplus of about 300000 That's right, yes. Do you think you'll get all those improvements done? Um, as with all of the projects, there are a lot of um, unknown factors. Um, certainly environmental and right away are the key issues associated with those. But for the most part, these projects are related to existing infrastructure, and, and it is our hope, yes, to get there. Um, again, we're challenged a little bit on the engineering side. In the past uh, four months about, we've had uh, seven uh, loss of seven people from the engineering department through retirements and resignations. How does engineering staffing this year compare to last year? Um, it, again, we are programming for filling those vacancies, or some of those vacancies, but overall we're going to be about three people less than the previous fiscal year, even after filling the, the vacancies. Okay, the other question I had had to do with the successor to RDA, and I don't see it in the book. I saw it on the computer screen, but is it is it in our book? It, I don't believe that it is. Okay. Uh, that, that budget is typically handled separately through the, the ROPS uh, process. Well, let me ask this question. It, it was in the budget that I looked at on the computer screen, so it's probably in there somewhere. Item number four. Um, We've got uh, the total expenditures or the total budgeted expenditures there are about 4.2 million. 3.2 million of that is bond payments, right? That's in the budget. Mm -hmm. uh, we got property taxes of 1.8 million. We got a shortfall. Of the revenues against the, the total expenses of about 2.3 million in that successor agency this year. Looks like we're going to have a problem making, and I think your your discussion made it clear we're going to have a problem making next December's bond payments. Do we do we still agree, believe that's the case? Um, the the item I think you're speaking to is item number four, dealing with the RDA's um, uh, ROPS. Is, is that yes, correct? Yes, exactly. Um, that's right. So that's separate and distinct from the issue where we've identified that we're. We are foreseeing, as it relates to the SCLA bonds, a potential issue in, in satisfying those obligations. So those are two different issues. Um, the item before you on item number four dealing with the successor agency budget deals with what was the former Bear Valley Road project area, the Hook Road project area, and the Old Town Road project area. But your, your points... Um, but not um, SCLA bonds. Those are not included in that ROPS. That is correct. That's they're on not, a they're separate, not RDA. Right. Well, that's on a separate ROPS... Um, Bear with me. Um, bear with me. That is on a separate ROPS. Uh, that's on a separate ROPS, but for uh, the Victorville RDA, dealing with the obligations that would have been inherited through its collection of tax increment revenue from VITA. But it looks like we're going to be short in December. Uh, for the SCLA. Yeah. That's correct. Do you agree? Uh, that's that's what I believe to be the case today. We're, and it looks like we'll be short about $2.3 million. What were we short last year? Uh, December of 2011, we shorted uh, originally about $7.2, $7.3 million. Uh, we made that hole in the um, spring, I think it was about April, um, largely because there was a, a cash flow difference is to receiving the money. 
If, if I'm comparing this to that, am I comparing apples with apples, or am I mixing two things mixing together? Mixing two things. Mixing two. Two yeah. things made up that 7.3. Are we going to be better off than the 7.3, do you think, this December in uh, terms of being short? We're expecting a short. Um, bear with me. That's a tough one to answer while he's thinking about that, simply because this is the really the second year. The first year we had some reserves that we could put towards that whereas this year we're totally dependent on whatever property tax we receive. The property tax uh, that we receive, the increment we receive, is projected to go up slightly uh, if you look at, the, at those schedules. Uh, but I, I'm not sure reserve-wise uh, how much there, there might be available. Will we have um, other revenues from the airport that can be used for that purpose? Um, technically you could, but it, it, it's not advised to do that. Um, the, the revenue that you generate from the airport um, is operating revenue, and that's what is required to either be spent on the actual operations first uh, or reinvested into the capital that directly uh, improves the airport. If you were to consider um, uh, using money from the airport operations to fund those debt service obligations, you'd have to go through an accounting analysis to determine of the money that you plan to send to help pay for those bonds, which specifically of those bonds were used to, to, for direct improvements that benefited directly for the airport. And there's a distinction because the, the, when, when we issued those airport bonds, we issued them as SCLA tax increment revenue bonds. They were secured with a security pledge, a tax increment that had slightly different flexibility uh, with the use of those mon monies. And those monies could be spent um, directly on the airport, uh, directly on what was former George Air Force Base, or in areas that were actually adjacent to and benefiting SCLA. So there's some distinction there, and if it was a policy decision to, you know, see what would be akin to free cash flow at the end of the day from the airport operations and use that for um, debt service obligation that's really secured by a tax increment pledge, um, you would do that, but it'd be, you could do that, but it'd be a pretty arduous uh, accounting process to, to may to not be that. a good idea anyway. I, I as, as the manager of your airport, I wouldn't advise it at this time. That's not a part of the security pledge for the bonds. Um, but speaking back to the uh, shorting uh, expected in December, um, it's, I, if I had to do some mental math, I would probably project three to $4 million short based upon what we received uh, just this last uh, couple of weeks, uh, as a part of the ROPS two distribution, we received a, a little about seven and a half million plus or minus um, as a part of the, the s whole successor agency process. Well, that's about half of what it was last year. Does that tell us we got some improvement going on here? No, it, it's it's what we expected. Um, right now, our debt service coverage is right at seventy five percent, which basically means your seventy five percent of your obligation is what you're collecting in tax increment revenue. Our annual, um, our annual debt service obligation is uh, plus or minus 18 and a half million, uh, just off the top of my head. Uh, so 75% of that is what you should generally expect um, from, uh, from the whole tax increment process, the successor agency process. But to the Victorville Redevelopment Agency, uh, one of the reasons that this has come up is because our ops number two, although approved by the City Council on May 1st, the related budget appropriation did not pass because we didn't have enough of an affirmative vote. Uh, is that going to be addressed at a future council meeting or what, what's the plan there? That is this item number four. Right. Okay. Right. This item number four is actually that ROPS. Um, this was our last opportunity before uh, July 1st to, to bring that back to the council. Oh. Is that only because we had three members present and we couldn't, we needed correct. three positive votes? Yeah, that, that's correct. So that, it really is not part of the, the annual budget process. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, I'm going to come in, staff. I, I thought it was... Uh, a lot of information there, a lot of detail that I didn't spend a lot of time going through, but the, I thought the overall summary information was uh, well done. And my understanding of the process is that it was generated at the department level, so everybody buys into this, right? Yeah, we we <laughs> got full buy-in, and everyone's committed to making it work.
Doug, could you address um, the issue of, of the public safety and cuts there? I mean, I, I thought that was explained last. It was. Uh, there's not actually any cuts to uh, existing uh, personnel. Um, we cut vacant positions, uh, five vacant positions, mostly in response to the uh, county cost allocation plan going up so high. That's based on the number of positions that you have budgeted on your, your Schedule uh, A, they call it. Um, so the elimination of those positions eliminates uh, the need to pay that 5% to the county for county costs. Um, when it was uh, only 3%, uh, it was beneficial to have those positions while holding them vacant so that we maintain those costs uh, in order to have flexibility. The uh, council will recall last fall we had uh, two positions that I authorized filling um, simply because uh, the chief needed those spots. Uh, if we had eliminated those positions last budget cycle, uh, 12 months ago, uh, we would have had to come back to the council and go to the Board of Supervisors in order to amend the contract. Unfortunately, because those vacant positions became more costly this year, uh, it made better sense to, uh, to, to go ahead and cut them. Um, there's a couple of other uh, vacant positions that we are eliminating uh, in order to save those, those costs again. Those are more medical vacancies than, than just a, a normal vacancy. I think last year I made the mistake of asking uh, Chief Reynolds if he was satisfied with the fact that he had eight vacancies. And I'll never ask that question again, I promise that. But I'm assuming if the chief was felt that he had spots he needed filled, that he was in, in serious, not desperate, but serious need to fill, he would be coming to this council and telling us he needed those spots filled. Because I think every one of us would do whatever we had to do to fill them. So we trust you to do that if the time comes. The very last question I asked uh, Captain Yoder in our budget session was, will you be able to get the job done with, with this staffing level? And his, his indication was yes. All right, I too would like to commend staff, especially uh, on the balanced budget and a little bit of surplus. We'll throw that into reserves um, and hopefully uh, start to replenish our reserves. And uh, if there's nothing further, then I will. Would the council be willing to buy the power cord for iPads? <laughs> Usually you get one of those if you buy an iPad yourself. <laughs> um, I will entertain a motion for uh, adopting the fiscal year 2012-2013 budget for all agencies. Motion by Council Member Kennedy, second by Council Member Rothschild. Uh, Mr. Mayor, just for clarity's sake, I would recommend that you take item number four uh, separately because it's not the fiscal year budget, it's, it's actually the ROPS. Okay. Motion carries with Mayor Pro Tem Cabrialis absent and Council Member Vias voting no. Okay, agenda item number four, you know, forgive me because it says right here, request to adopt the successor agency budget mm -hmm. uh, for July 1st to December 31st, 2012, as set forth in resolution R-SA-12-004. Motion by Council Member Kennedy, second by Council Member Rothschild. Motion carries with Mayor Pro Tem Cabrales absent and Council Member Vias voting no. Okay, we'll now move on to agenda item number six under the Victorville Water District. This is companion to City Council item number eight. This is a request to adopt resolution VWD 12 002, titled Resolution of the Victorville Water District Deferring Rate Adjustments for Water Service to Adopting Policies for the Administration of Customer Accounts Associated with the billing and collection of rates, fees, and charges for water services. Three, deferring adjustments of charges for water service connection, fees, and charges. And four, uh, superseding resolution number VWD 11-007 and resolution number VWD 11-013. This is a companion to item eight. Companion to item eight, everything would be the same. Uh, 
Are we voting on both of them at once? Yes, okay. we can, correct, Andre? That is correct. I'd like to ask the council if I have a conflict. I don't believe you have a conflict. This is just implementing procedural changes. Motion by Council Member Kennedy, second by Council Member Rothschild. Motion carries with Mayor Pro Tem Cabrales absent. Agenda item number nine, uh, this is a request to approve employment contracts for Bill Webb and John McGlade. I'm not used to calling you that, Sean. Motion by Council Member Kennedy, second by Council Member Rothschild. I have a question. So the fiscal impact for this contract is 204000 867. That's for one employee? That's correct. So it's actually two employees. It should be in 400,000, right? Uh, there's actually, they're listed separately in your agenda. Uh, the first one uh, is uh, Mr. Bill Webb. The second one is, is John A. We know him as Sean McGlade. Okay. And then can you tell me how um, this contract differs from what their compensation is now? Like how much money wise? Uh, the, the pay increase uh, from what they are right now is, is a little bit over 9 percent. 9 percent. And then um, does that include any other benefits that they're receiving in here? No, their other benefits remain the same. All right. Thank you. Motion carries with Mayor Pro Tem Cabrales absent and Council Member Vias voting no. All right, that concludes the uh, open session. I'll defer to our city count our city attorney for a closed session declaration. Thank you, Ma'am McEachern. We have one closed session listed. It's uh, anticipated litigation pursuant to Government Code five four nine five six point nine, and it pertains to actually subsections B three B, and it pertains to the Do ongoing grand jury right investigation. Here. To the extent there is reportable action, we will report that at the conclusion of the closed session. All right. We'll now move into closed session. Closed session of the City Council has concluded and there is no reportable action. Meeting stands adjourned.